All of these stories were submitted to me, whether through email or previous comments on older videos. As far as I know, all of these stories are indeed true. Story 1. Submitted by Finned to make this as long as possible. Honestly, skinwalkers scare me more than anything. Like I can't breathe. I'm frozen scared, tears rolling down my face. Backstory. I was homeless two years ago and living with two other homeless teens. As far as being homeless went, we were well off. We had each other and previous survival skills as we came from horrible homes. We befriended another homeless group and they showed us their ragtag camp which, in a way, was kinda magical. It was in the woods and actually had an actual bed carved from a tree and a tarp as shelter with battery powered fairy lights inside. My late grandpa was Native American, and that was kind of what got me into urban legends around Native history and such. Anyways, the homeless group we befriended took pity on us and lent us the campsite for a few weeks, and we were able to get work setting up things the way we wanted them. We had two dogs, Pepper who was severely abused and actually liked homelessness, and Autumn who was a demon in dog form who was also abused. Pepper was overly sensitive, cautious, and scared of her own shadow, and Autumn was the complete opposite. We set them under the tarp and a makeshift bed right above our heads, and for a few nights everything was okay. Then, it changed. We didn't feel safe there. We were up late telling stories and I mentioned the skinwalkers, and how talking about them attracted them. Halfway into the stories, our dogs go insane. I'd never seen the type of raw fear from either one of the dogs. Pepper was almost unrecognizable. She was so afraid but ready to protect us. We were horrified at first, frozen with anxiety and fear, but it wore down as soon as we realized how silly we were being. And then, we heard it. Not quite a human and not quite an animal. Nothing will ever scare me as much to this day. I have a bad heart condition and this scare almost killed me. We couldn't move. It was walking around the camp and the only thing protecting us was a cheap plastic tarp and some duct tape. I don't remember much from that night, only woke up to see the guys were still awake. Part of the camp was destroyed. We were too afraid to sleep there again so it became a storage place. All but one of us made it out of homelessness. Story 2 Submitted by Dead Ghost I've actually seen something of the antler man twice in my life while driving late at night through the back roads while on road trips, meaning I've actually got a good look two times standing up on two legs. First one was passing through Ohio in 2015, the second was in Maine in 2017. There might have been a third occasion while heading through New York, a bit east of Buffalo heading towards the Canadian border in 2018 but it was only a silhouette of something running through the trees alongside the highway I was on. I was the only car on the road driving through that night. It actually managed to keep up with me, side by side running through and behind the trees, mind you at 60 or 70 miles an hour. I took out my gun, opened the passenger window, and shot off four rounds, and just booked it up to 100 miles an hour, and didn't let up for over a good half hour. I have a radar detector, but even if there was a trooper setting off on pulling me over, that night I would not have stopped. Don't care if you believe me or not, just know that there are things out there that the government has special departments made just to conceal, to cover up, or to shut people up, and to make sure no one exposes things that go bump in the night to the general public. And it's not just skinwalkers or skinnies or whatever you want to call them out there. If those of you that still believe that these nasty things are just a load of crap or that Bigfoot is just a joke, gear up and go hike into the deep forest of the North America for a full seven days and seven nights. Bring a good weapon. And if you manage to come back in one piece and still alive and sane, then God seems to favor you. Story 3. Submitted by an active user. I think I encountered a skinwalker once as a kid. 
Because years ago, when I was like 10 or something, I saw my friend, I'll call her Jay, in this weird position that it didn't look possible to be in. The post Jay was in looked like a sideways cartwheel but paused and it looked like it was forming into a deer because the head kind of morphed into a deer head so I just screamed and ran away as any child would. Later I found Jay with my brother and another friend. I'm not sure if my eyes and brain were just making things spooky because I was in the dark but I'm not sure to be honest. I do know that I'll never be walking alone after that experience. I didn't want to see that happen again. I did feel watched after that, though. Story 4, submitted by Lil Monster. Quick little story time of a skinwalker type thing. So me and my older sister were home alone as our parents were out somewhere. We had two dogs at the time, a mini Aussie named Fancy and an Aussie blue healer named Jasper. Now, where we lived wasn't in the woods, but rather, somewhat out of town in a small neighborhood. We let out our dogs in a small fence area my dad made for them. There was a way in if you knew how it was put together. A tall teen or a man could climb over the fence. We let them in after a few minutes because Jasper was barking, which we had no neighbors facing the fence, so we thought it was just a cat. Fancy and Jasper come in, but Fancy seems off. She would normally go lay down in her kennel or go to the food bowl. She was shaking and hacking a lot. Then there was more scratching at the door, and my sister opened it this time. Fancy came in and did the actual thing she did, and the one from before disappeared. Later that night, I had a long scratch down my back from somewhere and none of my dogs did it. Going back a couple months before when school was going, I went to the bus stop in the morning around 6.30. It was still pitch black out. I had seen this huge shadow that looked like a humanoid on all fours, but with the face of an animal. The legs were weirdly bent and the back arced. I knew this wasn't a dog because when a car drove by, it seemed as if it was walking towards me. But as soon as the light hit it, it ran. Story 5. Submitted by Cobb underscore W3. BZ. As somebody who owns property right by Walker Ranch, I can confirm that there's something going on up there. I have a story of my own when I was about 13. We were camping up at my property and me and my two brothers decided to go hike. Keep in mind it was at sunset and that's when things start getting weird up there. Anyways, we started hiking and eventually reached the top of the mountain slash hill we were on that was relatively small. We stayed up there for a while and explored rock formations, caught lizards, and tracked animals. We were having a good time, but it was getting dark pretty quickly, so we decided to head back down. My younger brother was in front, about 30 feet in front of me. My older brother was a little bit behind him, and I was at the back, still taking in the scenery. This whole time I had been hearing coyotes howling and twigs snapping, but thought nothing of it because it was normal but I got this weird feeling, like someone was watching us. I picked up the pace and told them to go a little faster, just in case. I felt my stomach flip and I heard a growl from an animal that didn't sound right. It was almost like a gurgle. I didn't take my time and I told them to run. The whole time I heard branches snapping behind me. We made it down safe and didn't see anything, but the encounter still has its hold on me. I am way more careful and respectful of that land now. Story 6, submitted by Mia Amour. My personal experience, when I was younger, I went camping with my friends. There were three of us and we were all teens. We were walking to our campsite at like 4 p.m. and it was starting to get dark. We heard something large nearby. My friend pulled out his father's gun thinking it could be a wild pig. We all heard a growl. It was loud and it sounded like it was coming from behind us. We just stood there, not daring to look behind us. I screamed to run and we all ran back towards where we entered the forest. We got home safely. We still don't know for sure what it was. 
Story 7, submitted by My Mare Flicka. I have two very scary stories. This all happened when we moved to a small neighborhood in Arizona, where everyone had about an acre of land. So we had just moved in, and me and my two sisters were sharing a room for the night. And in the middle of the night, we hear growling outside our window. Not like any other growling we've heard. So at this point, we are terrified, and we are trying to comprehend what this animal is. And then all we hear is screaming. We don't know from what, but it's so distinct. It has been five years since that incident, and we've now moved to a different state. But I will never forget that moment when the hairs on the back of my neck stood up. I should also say that we weren't city kids. We were used to wild animals like coyotes in our neighborhood. Now here is a more recent one, in the same house. This was when our house was for sale. The rest of our family was out of state checking out the other house, and I was staying there because I had to take care of my horse. That day, my sister forgot to pick me up, so we had no curtains at the living room window, and I am in my old bedroom. I start hearing knocking and a little growl. I am thinking about my horse that it is possibly exposed to this creature, and I am also thinking, what growls and is at human level? I eventually fell asleep, and in the morning, my precious horse was okay. I found that the grass was matted down like something was pacing around, but that was about seven months ago. I was able to bring my horse across the state, and I miss Arizona. I'm also Christian, and for my friends from our old church believe, it was a skinwalker. By the way, becoming a skinwalker, you basically have to kill certain people as a sacrifice to the devil, which is believable. Stay safe, and God bless. Story 8, submitted by Mick Scrunkley. I know that this isn't important, but here is my story with skinwalkers, or my experience. Summer 2020, bored in my house, excited to go out in the woods with my friends I hadn't seen in a long time. We got there at least 4 p.m. My friends smoke cigarettes while I just walk around till we hear a faint sound. It was footsteps. My friend was alert, but my other friend, Alex, said it was, quote, Nothing serious, probably a random bug or something falling. The time turned around 8, the sun went down, and then, ch -ch 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 -ch, they were back. My friend Alex was now fearful, believing me. He made a joke about it being a skinwalker, and when he said that, it started sprinting. All three of us bolted to the exit of the forest while Alex tried grabbing a hatchet out of his bag inherently causing his bag to fall, but ran away instead of trying to pick it up. We were out of the forest when we realized that it was no human. We heard this ear-piercing shriek after we escaped that thing. I live in suburban New York. Nothing like this has ever happened. My friends and I moved near the city in a suburban area. It's safe to say that I'm never going back into the woods after this video. Story 9, submitted by Native Lightning. This recently happened to me. It was 12 a.m. and my mother was going outside for a smoke. And as she is smoking, she is talking to my auntie. And as she was talking, she heard a human scream, then turned into coyote giggles. She explained to me that she told me and my brother to go downstairs and lock the windows and the doors downstairs. As we did, I feared that we would see that thing standing outside, waiting for us. But we did not, thankfully, and we barely got any sleep that night. All we thought about was that thing that screamed in the woods. It's currently the next day and I'm writing this thing. If anyone has any idea what it was or anything, please tell me, as I am freaking out. Story 10, submitted by Vault Dweller. I have a memory of when I was younger, and I was going to my father's house down the road that only had one side street full of houses, and when passing by one of the houses, I saw some type of giant dog horse thing, but only barely. We stopped going down that road for some reason, and one day me and my brothers and my brother's wife went fishing and told ghost stories. I'm not a huge fan of them. I told them the same thing I just told you and they said it could have been a skinwalker. 
If it was, I'm happy. I made it without it seeing me. Story 11, submitted by Nocturnal Weep. I had a cabin on Old Indian land. Some pretty terrible things had happened in the creek nearby there had a little girl get murdered, or rather, brutally missing. Only gruesome traces left, many, many years ago. The Indians to this day refuse to travel that part of the land and you can hear her footsteps and brush moving on windless nights. Almost as if wars were fought hundreds of years ago were being reenacted. One time, my stepmother recollected a night she was there when it was foggy. She said she heard a scream pierce the night and a terrible smell of death like those off a fresh kill from a successful hunt. Nobody ever traveled alone at dark and I remember the door to the cabin having the most overly bulky deadbolt and one of the other sliding ones to boot. Thankfully, we finally sold it out of the family about eight years ago. Story 12, submitted by Nenny Yashiro. Now that I think of it, I remember this one time seeing a skinwalker. One time I was invited to my friend's sleepover party, so everyone who was staying the night was me, Mary, and Hannah, who was the birthday girl. So this was about the time when clowns were going around. I was good at art, so they wanted me to play a prank on Hannah's cousin who lived right down the road. When we were done, we started to walk along the road to their cousin's house. Who was all there was Mary, Hannah, me, and Hannah's older brother. When we were walking, I thought I heard a grumble clicking noise behind us. So when I turned around, I see this huge animal staring at us. It was super dark out, so I couldn't make the face out, but I could see the glowing, glimmering eyes. It looked too huge to be a coyote or a mountain lion, so I did something not super smart now that I think about it. I grabbed the older brother's knife from his waist and had everyone back up behind me. The creature started to walk towards us and I walked like if you're going to try to have your shoulder blades pop out. But when I was backing everyone up, I held the knife to my chest, ready to jump at it. When I was backing them up, a huge growl like roar came out of my throat, scaring not only me, but the rest of us too including the creature. The creature just turned around and ran back into the woods. When we had the adults come pick us up, I saw the glimmering glowing eyes in the forest, but they were way above the ground now. Lesson learned. Do not go prank people near the woods. Story 13, submitted by Kiwi's Life. I don't know who wants to hear this, or who needs to hear this, who just wants to share my story, but when I was about seven, my family had just moved into an apartment right in front of the forest. The forest spread for miles and miles with no stop, but it just so happened that my window faced the forest. One night, about a week after we moved in, my bed was placed under the window because I got hot when I slept and needed the cold air from the window. When I was getting ready for bed, I was looking out my window at the stars and then I saw it. A goat-like creature standing on two legs, just standing there. Its cream-colored teeth were out and glossy, just staring at me. I looked at my sister and asked her to come over to see what I was seeing, but when she got there, the thing had gone. She left my bed and I went out of my room while my back was turned. I heard an ear-piercing scream followed by knocks on my window. I screamed and ran to my mom's room. She asked what was wrong, and when I told her, she grabbed me and my sister and took us to her room and told my stepdad to get his gun. As we waited in our tiny apartment, we heard it. Another loud scream and a stomp on the roof. I lived on the top floor. We left that night, leaving everything in the house and didn't come back till a couple weeks later. The thing that I saw was a skinwalker, and I was lucky I wasn't on the balcony, and that I was inside my room that my mom listened to me, and that my mom not only believed me, but she knew what I saw. Story 14, 